Welcome to Golf Smarter Mulligans, your second chance to gain insight and advice from the best instructors featured on the Golf Smarter podcast. Great golf instruction never gets old. Our interview library features hundreds of hours of game improvement conversations like this that are no longer available in any podcast app. Let's first define the obstacle. It is like a hiccup right before impact. It starts happening about 180 milliseconds before you actually make contact with the ball. As I say, it's like a hiccup. The closest thing that I can really describe that people know about is a stutter. Just before impact, the hands start stuttering. And under pressure, obviously, the stutter becomes even more pronounced. People say to me, yeah, yeah, it's because I have tension. The tension really just sort of aggravates the problem. It's not causing the problem. This hiccup or stutter just before impact is obviously a neurological problem orchestrated by the mind, so it originates in the mind. With another interview from the archives of Golf Smarter, here's your host, Fred Green. Welcome to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Marius. Hello. Fred, thanks for having me on. Oh, well, thanks for joining us. Um, it's a great honor to have you on uh, our cute little podcast here because we uh, rarely get to speak with someone with your illustrious career and the people that you have worked with um, and looking at your website, names that just kind of fly by include uh, Els, Duval, O'Meara, Zeller, Howell the Third, uh, Mize, Watson, Immelman, Anthony Kim, Kite, in Faxon, it just kind of goes on and on. You've worked with a number of tour players that have had tremendous success. Congratulations. Thank you very, very much. And I'm also sure that you have studied the putting uh, finesse of a lot of amateurs as well. Yes, I, I think where it all started was obviously with the um, with the amateurs. I was working with amateurs and really what what focused my career was uh, one of my best friends um, uh, developed the yips. Now that's something, you know, uh, that certain golfers, they, they get that and and then it makes their life a little bit uncomfortable on the greens. Um, and I looked at this and I thought, gee, was, uh, there must be a way to fix this. And... Um, that brought me into, you know, being putting, studying, fine motor skill movements. I then um, teamed up with uh, Professor Purple. He's a great gentleman uh, at the um, Ludwig Maximilian University in Munich. And um, we, we looked at this phenomena and uh, we started researching it. And... And that's where it all started. So it, to answer the question, yes, I, I love working with amateurs, and I enjoy it. So were you doing golf instruction be, uh, when your friend was uh, developing the yips? Yes, yes. I was in a golf club in Munich, and um, this friend of mine, you know, as I said, developed the yips. The problem was... Nobody at that time, and I'm talking 20 odd years ago, nobody at that time really knew a lot about the yips. They all thought it was, you know, some psychological problem. And in fact, when we started researching it, we immediately found that it's not a psychological problem. Um, if it had been a psychological problem, psychologists would be able to fix it type of thing, you know. And that led us into trying to figure out really what it is. And in the beginning, we inter interviewed a lot of people with the yips. Uh, and that gave us, you know, some information, but uh, it was not measurable objective data. So we had a problem. And then we decided we need to develop some sort of a system where we can actually measure the putting stroke. Now, um, in the olden days, if I may call it that, people thought that the 
The hips was an overuse syndrome, for instance. In other words, if you play golf and you putt a lot and you use the same motor program uh, in the brain a lot, that motor program expands and explodes, and that'll give you a sort of a yip. But um, when we started, you know, interviewing people, and I, in the beginning, I, I just had an eye for it. I could see when people yip. Um, and, you know, I saw children yip. So I knew that the the whole theory of, you know, overuse syndrome is not true. And then we developed a system um, to measure the putting stroke. Uh, and at that time, we measured 28 different parameters in the, in the putting stroke. We looked at acceleration, speed, rotation, path, angle of attack, impact spot, you know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and that gave us a really good indication of people are doing. But then the, the problem I had was I had no, no blueprint. I had no baseline. So I didn't know what a good putt would look like. And I didn't know what a bad putt looked like. So I spent um, many years on the European tour, uh, going from, you know, uh, tournaments and measure uh, the, the top putters in, in, on the tour. Um, I also, at that time, uh, by just uh, coincidence, measured the bottom performers. In other words, I looked at the statistics that week, and I would see a couple of players in the top 10% uh, in the putting statistics. So I'll make sure that I get them on the machine. And then I looked at the bottom 10%. So I tried to get them on the machine as well. So after about a year or so, we actually saw big differences between the top putters and the bottom putters. Uh, so at least we knew what was a good stroke, what was a bad stroke for professionals. And then we obviously we measured the yippers and we could immediately identify the differences between a yip stroke and a normal or a good stroke. Um, when you talk about the yips, and there are people who are listening right now that are, are new golfers, and there are people who've been playing for their entire lives, uh, I've heard so many different definitions of what the yips are. Plus, I've heard, I've refer, heard it referred to uh, both on the green and out on the fairway. Um, is Are the yips... Do they only happen, I'm going to ask you two questions here, and I, I know you can go in either direction with this, and I apologize for asking two questions at once, but are the yips mainly, from your perspective, on the, on the putting green? It's a putting issue? And please define what the yips are so we all understand exactly where we're going with this. Okay, the, the, let's first define yips. The yips is, um, is, is, is like a hiccup right before impact. And it happens uh, in a, about, it starts happening about 180 milliseconds before you actually make contact with the ball. Um, as I say, it's like a hiccup. The closest thing that I can really describe that people know about is a stutter. So it seems to me just before impact, the, the hands uh, starts stuttering, you know, when people stutter. And under pressure, obviously, this stutter becomes even more pronounced. So um, people say to me, yeah, yeah, it's only it's because I have tension. The tension really just sort of aggravates the problem. It doesn't, it's not causing the problem. So this hiccup or stutter just before impact is obviously a neurological problem um, in the sense, you know, all, all motor movements are orchestrated by the mind. So it is, it originates in the mind. Um, so th this is, this movement is so, um, 
it's, it's definitely not a voluntary movement. Nobody that has the hips uh, or want the hips. So, um, so it, it, it's something that happens. You cannot control it. And um, normally people, um, they know before they're going to yip, uh, they know it's going to happen. So that, that's kind of the psychological side of it as well. But, you know, the, the yips is not only caused by neurological problems. Obviously, it's, it all stems from the brain. But it could also be, you know, a medical problem. I've seen people develop the yips when they had, um, for instance, a tremor. The tremor in the hand could cause a yips. Um, it could be, you know, from a medical perspective, it could be early signs of, of some sort of a tremor or, or um, some medical problem. I don't want to, you know, really get involved in that because that's, that's not my expertise. Sure. But yes, th- that, that is the yips. Does the yip only happen with people on the putting green? No. Um, originally, we thought that um, a yip can only relate to fine motor skill movements. Now, a fine motor skill movement is really defined. Uh, let's look at putting. Putting is defined really as a ramp movement, R-A-M-P, ramp movement. The ramp movement is a, is a movement that's constantly and continuously under control. That is like driving your motor car. So you're steering the, the, the wheels all the time. So it's a movement that's constantly under control. And if you, if you feel the car is moving too far to the left, you will counter um, that by turning the steering wheel in the other direction. So the, it's, a, it's a continuous control, a movement that's under control. Whereas we find with a full swing, which we refer to as a ballistic movement, you probably cannot alter that movement. So in, in other words, once you engage in a ballistic movement, you cannot change it anymore. So uh, as with you know, driving your car, the right movement, fine motor skill movement, which is continuously under control, you can interfere in that movement anytime. Whereas with a ballistic movement, once you've engaged in it, you cannot change it. So we initially thought the yips really only relates to fine motor skill movements. But subsequently, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so one thing we know for sure is the more you research something, the less you know. And I've been you know, researching the yips for the last 20 odd years. And... I must say I know probably less now than I did in the beginning. That's just a joke, but that's the feeling you have. Um, The yip, uh, can you cure the yip? Can you cure this thing that you jump at the ball just before impact? Um, Yes, I think you can. Uh, The causes of the yip is... You know, what I concentrate on in my career is really the the mechanics of the golf swing, the mechanics and techniques of the putting stroke, chipping, pitching, which we refer as the fine motor skill movement. So all the fine motor skill movement, um, I think it's very important that you have very good technique because technique can actually hamper not only your score, but it could point you in the direction of a yip. Now, there's two different type of yips. And as you know, I'm sorry for talking so much. Um, no, that's why we invited you, you know, here. <laughs> I appreciate your explanation. It's thorough. But, but I, I want to jump in with a lot of questions. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you, you have two the things that you need to control in golf. If you can hit the ball the correct distance and the correct direction, it will finish up where you want it to. 
So in other words, if you look at a putt, if you had hit the putt on the right line, which is the direction, with the right speed, which I refer to as the distance, you will the ball will end up in the hole. So that's why we've identified two types of yips. So it's an accelerational yip. So people cannot control the acceleration of the club through the ball. And then you have a directional hip. Uh, they cannot control the face, the angle of the club face at impact. So that's the two types of yips that you have. What type of yip I find more prevalent, I personally think that the acceleration is probably uh, most prevalent and I think that could also and most probably do cause a directional yip. So the moment that people accelerate too much through the ball that could cause the problem. And one of the things that I found that blew my mind, you know, while researching not only the putting stroke, but also full swings and, and chipping motions, is that good golfers, they hit the ball at top speed. Now, that is probably not that profound, but that changed my total view of how you should swing the golf club, mm. especially in putting. If you want to hit the ball at top speed, you must remember that when you reach top speed with your car, at that moment when you get to top speed, you're not accelerating anymore and you're not decelerating anymore. Okay, so it is, it is a, a state in which I call you decelerating. So in other words, you're just maintaining speed. And we've been brought up, you know, especially in putting, and say accelerate through the ball. Now, the moment you accelerate, you cannot be at top, at top speed when you actually hit the ball. So the key here is to hit the ball at top speed. And when you reach top speed, you are not accelerating, you're not decelerating, you're just maintaining speed. So that, that was something that really, I had to wrap my head around that one, and it took me a little while to, to get that. So a, a, a very important principle is hit the ball at top speed. And the, the thing that we heard that, you know, accelerate through the ball, the problem with that is, if you don't hit the ball at top speed, the club most probably won't be square at impact because the brain is kind of wired in such a way where it says, okay, if the club travels at top speed, the club face will be square to the target. Now, the problem is if you accelerate through the ball, that means you are actually hitting the ball before top speed. And therefore, the brain is not ready to have the club face square. And the problem with that is, now you, you hit the ball and it goes either left or right or wherever it goes, and now you've got to consciously manipulate the club to have way at impact. So there's a constant sort of uh, war, you know, a conflict going on between the conscious and the subconscious mind. And as you know, it's probably best to have, you know, these movements in the subconscious mind. Um, if you start thinking how you walk, you probably will trip. If you think how you drive the car, it becomes a really, a very difficult task to do. So what you ideally want is to have these movements in the subconscious mind. Now, if you have to manipulate the club, that you can only do consciously. So now, if the conscious mind and the subconscious mind is in conflict, 
that could be a certainly an indication of the yip. Well, uh, one of the things that I love about doing a podcast, and I think that the audience appreciates it as well, is that they can listen to it multiple times. And you talk about wrapping your head around something. The first 18 minutes of this conversation is so dense <laughs> with information. You've provided so many things that just I just want to take in sections and go, wow. I, I'm curious as to these theories that you have developed over the about the yips and that it's not necessarily psychological. Was that kind of heresy in the golf instruction community? Did people want to just say, you're out of your mind? It's, it's totally psychological because as soon as somebody has an issue with their putting, they get nervous with it and, they, and it just it kind of snowballs uh, on itself and it becomes totally psychological. I think the yips uh, eventually causes the thing to be a psychological problem as well. I mean, okay. no question about that. If you if you miss the first three footer um, and you don't think about it, um, you're good. But you miss the second one and you start thinking, now, oh, why did I miss that one? And then you start analyzing that. And then on the next green, you've got another three foot and you miss that one. So now it becomes a problem. Sure. That's also, you know, I, I see, for instance, people practice and they would hit five, six, seven, ten shots. Great. And then they would hit one shot um, twice. And then they'll spend a lot of time trying to figure out you know, how to fix that slice. <laughs> um, oh, do I know it well? <laughs> I'm sorry for and laughing. I would, I, would, <laughs> I would rather see people, you know, trying to remember what they did right in those five or six or seven shots that went straight. Uh, try and rather repeat what you did good than try and figure out what you did wrong. And yes, sir. I'm suggesting you shouldn't fix problems. Of course, you have to fix problems. But I think um, it will also help us a lot not to only think about the, the, the bad shots, but really focus on what you're doing right. You know, it, it happens so much so that, especially on the, on the golf course during a round, that people will have one bad shot and they'll start tweaking things during their round of golf, which is probably the worst time to do it. It's something you should put in your memory bank, I guess, and then go talk to your instructor about it, but not something that, you know, again, like you say, you should be focusing on your better shots. Yeah, you know, I, I, I play with guys and then they hit the ball great. And then after four holes or five holes, they start hitting the ball bad. And I say, you know, what has changed? No, 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 I've, I've got a different swing thought. And then I would say, are you nuts? <laughs> you were hitting the ball great. Why don't you just stick to that? And then, and then they, they cannot really explain that. Mm -hmm. But, and that's the problem. So once we find something that works, you know, it's like, you know, I work with pros, the professionals, and, you know, you give them a, a aspirin, uh, for a headache, and it works, and then they take the whole bottle, and that's not good. That's not good. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in our last so, few minutes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. No, so, what I'm trying to say is, I, 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 I play golf with people, they, they hit the ball in the water on a par three. And the thing they say to me is, Marius, you won't believe it. Last week, I played the same hole, and I hit it in the same damn water. So I, I try and explain to them the reason for that is, you know, you've put that shot that went into the water in your memory bank. And, um, you know, if you, if, you have, if you get to that shot again, um, you know, the mind um, sort of does a Google search, and it logs onto some shot that you hit in the past and if the shot that you hit into the water um, is the most fresh it'll probably log on to that program so the key is to once you hit a bad shot it's really to try and forget about it 
you know, don't have the emotional um, connotation to it. Make sure that you immediately try and concentrate on what you should do. And that way you can probably eliminate the mind logging onto that, that particular shot again. Absolutely. Here, here. I love it. Um, let's in our last couple minutes here. Let's um, talk about uh, how people can learn more about your work and uh, even participate in it. Hopefully, um, you have a number of uh, golf websites. Uh, first one is MariusGolf.com. Marius is spelled M-A-R-I-U-S. MariusGolf.com and MariusGolfSchools.com. Tell us briefly about the golf schools. Well, we did golf schools, um, um, you know, from time to time. There's probably um, every month uh, somewhere there's one available. Uh, I do a lot of schools at uh, private golf courses. The members uh, ask me to come over and um, I do some some intensive half-day or in some cases, full-day schools. Um, I prefer to do half-day schools because there's so much information and you've got to retrain the way you think a little bit uh, because I believe, you know, if you think different, you'll do different. And um, so often I see people on the driving range or putting green, they practice, 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 but they don't think different. And... Therefore, they don't do different. They might think they do different, but they actually don't. Mm. Then check out MariusGolfSchools.com. And then um, also want to talk about you have a new DVD instructional set called Automatic Putting. Um, give us a, 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 a brief overview of that and how we can purchase it. Well, um, to purchase it, obviously go on to the website MariusGolf.com. Um, uh, the whole DVD I put together, um, it's really based on on some of the research I did. Um, after you know working with the professionals, I noticed that there is major differences between the top performers and the bottom performers. And um, I have put this DVD together, you know, and emphasizing the differences between top producers and bottom producers, the best putters in the world and the not so good putters in the world. And there's no reason why people shouldn't putt well. I mean, I can understand that I cannot hit the ball as far as J.B. Holmes or Bubba Watson or whatever. That. Um, but there's no reason why I cannot putt as well as Tiger or, or Crenshaw or whoever. You know, so... Um, people can improve their scoring by putting better. And the problem I see with um, people practicing their putting is they they make a bad, bad stroke and then they hit the ball in the hole. And then they make a really good stroke and they miss the hole. And now what sort of feedback do you get from that? So you're saying that the putting green is the area on the golf course that levels the playing field so that no matter how long it takes you to get onto the green and no matter what your physical ability, um, that once you're on the green, it doesn't matter what your index is, that's where you should be able to take advantage of no matter what skill level you have. Correct. Wow. Everybody can do it. Um, because it's, it's not a difficult motion, but to understand what needs to happen, if you can store, understand the laws that governs putting, then you will think different, you will do different, and you'll putt better and chip better. Unbelievable. That's right. I have to ask you, and I, and I apologize for asking this, what, are, you, are you on a cell phone? Yes, I am. And what kind of cell phone are you on? What what service are you using here? We we've been had a, it's not been a phenomenal signal. We have been able to understand everything that you said, but it's 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 not been a great signal. I'm just curious, what kind of cell phone is it? 
It is a BlackBerry, and I'm using AT&T. Uh, AT&T, the magic word. Well, there you go. Uh, well, <laughs> Marius, thank you so much for spending time. I'm sure that we could have you on this program numerous times and get completely different perspective and new information than anything we've ever heard. Um, it's been just... I, I really appreciate you spending the time with us because this has been absolutely fascinating. And again, I want to urge everyone to go to either MariusGolf.com, MariusGolfSchools.com, and check out the DVD set Automatic Putting. Marius Filmalter, thank you so much for coming on to the Golf Smarter Podcast. 